This is by far some of the best editing I've seen on YouTube as far as a stylistic creative standpoint. And this isn't really a well-known YouTuber, so this is a pretty good gem to find. In this reaction, I explained a lot of the effects and everything that was going on inside of the video, and there was a good bit, which might be interesting to learn how it was done. That's enough of me talking for the intro. Let's go ahead and get straight into the reaction. So the other day I was scrolling on YouTube, right? And I came across Skymography, or actually, let's see how to say it. I came across Skymography. Okay, so what I said. And I was pretty intrigued because it looked like he was another channel about post-production and stuff like that, like myself. And so I clicked on one of his videos, and when I tell you, I was really impressed on the way it was put together to the point where I had to pause it and I was like, okay, I gotta make a fresh reaction to this because it was just, it was pretty sick. And so I'm pretty excited about this one. And also I'm a little bit, I got a little bit of a cough going. I don't know what's going on, but if you couldn't already tell by my voice. So I thought it might be a little bit better if I made a video where I'm not talking the whole way through entirely. So the video we're gonna be checking out is the rare effect every editor should know. Hey. I'm an editor. Let's see if I already know this. I don't know. Here we go. There are many things I can do, and many more that I can't. I've come to appreciate the beauty of embracing both my strengths and limitations. Each challenge becomes an open canvas where I can blend the knowledge I've acquired with the colors of my determination. There is solace in realizing that it's not just about mastering every skill, but about the joy found in the process of doing. However, these limitations are rooted in reality. Time and resources are finite, and some creative endeavors call my name more faintly than the rest. It just so happens to be that painting is one such endeavor. <laughs> what did I just make? Yeah, I don't know how to paint. I love the- All right, ending there, that was the first 30 seconds of the video, which would be considered the cold open of a video. And in this instance, it's not really a cold open Kind of. I mean, most of the time, cold opens are really like energetic, intense, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever. Classic YouTube editing, right? And you can really tell this guy's all about production because that was pretty great, honestly. I mean, immediately at the start of the video, it starts off with a intense, not intense, but a, like a dramatic hit starting off the video. There are many things I can do. There's these like risers and hits that are dramatic that goes into different scenes or different shots uh, that's going through on this. And many more that I can't. I've come to appreciate the beauty of embracing both my strengths. And the grade is very, very cinematic in and of itself. And yeah, it's pretty sick. This is the type of editing. I feel like it's not the same exact style, but the same area of production reminds me a little bit of Gox, which is another reaction that I did a little bit ago. And I thought that was pretty sick and I was really excited about that one. But this one, I'm excited to see the rest of this. So let's check it out. These limitations are rooted in reality. Time and resources are finite and some creative endeavors call my name more faintly than the rest. And you'll also notice even behind, like whenever he's painting, you'll hear the sound effect in the background. Each challenge becomes an open canvas where I can- And some of the sound effects get a little bit distorted just for cinematic effect. Like whenever the drop from the water hit it, it seemed like he distorted it a little bit uh, just to, to give it some personality. And some creative endeavors call my name more- Which is pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know how to paint. I love the art form, but more as an admirer than a creator. So when I make the claim that I can turn myself into an animated painting, what do I even mean? I believe the most valuable skill anyone can develop comes into play here, adaptability. This is about finding a way to achieve the end result precisely because I lack that experience. The question then is, if I'm to create this animation, do I really need to learn how to paint? All right, already I'm just gonna mention this. Um, every single thing, with sound design, he's pretty much on point with everything. Like the zoom ins and zooms out. Oh my goodness. The zoom ins and zoom outs have the whooshes or what you would call a uh, sound effect behind it. The end result precisely because I lack that experience. The question- Which really shows the amount of detail that he took in creating this video, especially with the titles 
you know, there's a hit. Adaptability. Yeah, right now we're looking at an effect. The simple way he would create this effect is by, since there's an open gap in that area that you can use to blend and cut uh, two different shots. So the camera's set still, and then obviously the zooms and stuff are in post, but that's pretty much how that's made. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. If I can take the final product that's in my head and work it backwards into smaller pieces, then the whole thing becomes a little less daunting. So let's give this a shot. I want a painting style piece for the final product. Since I have no ideas yet, I'm gonna to need to spend some time storyboarding. Once I have the concept, I can then start doing tests, shooting the scenes and building out any digital needs. Then it's a matter of compositing it all together to create a complete sequence, which I can then turn into a painting. There are gaps in this, but that kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> oh man. Told you there's gonna be a lot of there's gonna be a lot of editing here, a lot of animation. Clearly, the level of detail he's got a glow underneath it, which is of course added in post. And again, the cards itself, each each every single thing that's going on here has sound design behind it, and it seems like it has that choppy effect, fr lower frame rate look to it uh, when it comes to the overall effect and yeah there's definitely some animation that that was incorporated in this that's pretty s insane together to create a complete sequence which i can then turn into a painting there are gaps in this but that kind of doesn't matter what i just made is a solid foundation for a workflow to get from beginning to end man the overall graphics of course he's in focus for this whole shot but he just put a gaussian blur over behind so that Whenever he separated the cards, he would just bring the blur down and then put a blur over the cards as well. So it, it swaps pretty much is how he would do that with the graphic here. And now obviously there's so many things that are just going with the motion. Like you'll see he cuts with the motion of him going up to another shot with that same action. Yeah, if I, I feel like if I comment on every single thing, I'll just be repeating myself because sound design, all of that. So let's just continue. That kind of doesn't matter. What I just made is a solid foundation for a workflow to get from beginning to end, and I can adapt as I go. Let's start with the storyboard. After spending a decent amount of time drawing and sitting there trying to concept how to make this all work, I came up with this. So let's actually go through the storyboard right now. We start with the camera moving closer to a painting until we're pulled inside. A spotlight is turned on above me with a transition to some close-up cards. Following a scene with the symbols, we push through to a silhouette of me, ending on a macro shot of my eye where my pupil changes. So that's basically the idea. All right. So yeah, that was pretty, I mean, there's a prism around. It's like focused, obviously, so the edges are blurred. And there might be a little bit of a vignette around the edges if you look at it. Just really focusing in on the center shot. And so he just added, added transitions between each one. And you'll see some other stuff on the edges here that show uh, it's supposed to be in the same writing itself, connecting all of them. We push through to a silhouette of me, ending on a macro shot of my eye where my pupil changes. So that's basically the idea. Now I just need to make the shots and see if this all comes together. And we may end up changing some things, but there's only one way to find out. Hello again, it is quite- All right, so he had a quick cut to the beat or the classical piece uh, of the piano, which, you know, just a creative, creative idea, creative freedom. That's what you have on YouTube. It's flipping the chapters. It's quite a few hours later and we are now fully dark and set up for some shooting. There's four shots I need to get done tonight. The establishing shot, that overhead shot, the silhouette shot, and then the close-up of my eye. And I think I could get all of that done tonight. I'm gonna do the overhead shot first. I think the idea is I'm gonna lift the camera up and I'm gonna set up a little black blanket on the ground and uh, see if this works. Okay. All right, I think I already found a little bit of an issue here. And uh, I don't know if you could tell, but you can't really see my legs in this. I think. Okay, so you see how, one, the music is different, and he likes, again, it's a little bit similar to to the type of stuff Gox was using when it comes to the, the style and stuff like that. You know, strings, classical pieces, stuff like that, which most of the time I don't blame him because 
that stuff gives more of a cinematic feel when it comes to creating a project. But like right there, he's adding a lot of zoom in, zoom out. Again, there's sound, des sound design behind every single thing. Uh, he redid that one effect. Whenever he was saying what he was going to do, he showed the footage of him doing it to cover more ground when it comes to the length of that section. So it wasn't like, I'm going to do this. And then he cut to another shot of him talking while like, I'm putting the blanket down, blah, blah, blah. No, he just showed him doing it as B-roll so they could cut straight into what he's doing right now. If that makes sense. I'm going to change pants to something a little bit lighter. First bit of problem solving. Uh, I'll be back. And just like that, much better. My legs should actually show up now in the shot. I think that turned out pretty well. Yeah, let's move on to the next shot. Shot. Just before he moves on, that effect, I mean, there's... Instead of problem solving, uh, I'll be back. I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory, but you added a camera shake adjustment layer over top uh, with a handheld, maybe increased it a lot more so it shakes more. And he's got this smoke overlay or whatever that is. And then obviously he's standing in the same spot. And so that's able to cover if he wasn't perfectly in the same spot. Simple as that. Maybe some motion blur over it to give it a little bit with that shake. Just like that, much better. My legs should actually show up now in the shot. I think that turned out pretty well. Yeah, let's move on to the next shot. Shot number two, which is really shot number one. I'm gonna be sitting down on my stool here in front of a black backdrop, kind of portraiture-ish, think like oil painting fancy, but I need to set up that black blanket that I used in the last shot on the wall, so I'm just gonna duct tape it and uh, hopefully it stays. I look like I'm about to take my yearbook photo. Again, same thing, using it as B-roll to just move forward with it. So as long as the black backdrop stays, which I think <clears> it is, then I should be good to just look up at the camera. We'll see if this works. Let's, let's get this shot done. I just, I just finished. This is so goofy, but I think it'll work. I think it'll work with the painting and the right sound design and music. Yeah, onto the next shot. Let's get the silhouette shot done. The idea for this shot is shooting directly into the softbox, but exposing for the light instead of me. So I'm full on silhouette. Let's get this grid off. All right, fully silhouetted. All I need to do is just stand hmm. right. He did a little bit different in there. He didn't. He said, let's get this grid off. And then he actually showed the clip of him doing it with the, with the noise instead of using it as B-roll. Switching it up a little bit, I see. Here in front of the light, just get the shot and that's it. And then right here where the edges are, I can expand this out in After Effects. Okay, so yeah, that explains why there's that amount of like animation and graphics like that. It's because clearly he knows how to use After Effects pretty well. If he's a... Uh, you know, just using it casually like that. So. Finally, on the last shot of me, it's just a macro shot of my eye. So I have the extension tubes here that let me get really close. And all I got to do is just position myself right here. I'm going to get this done. And there you have it. All finished. It's just past midnight. I'm going to pack it up and go to sleep because I'm pretty tired. I'd say good shoot day. We got this done. Let's pause for a moment. I've gotten many questions about how I sound design my projects and if I could share my personal library. I sense an ad about a show up. Because of that, I made it a mission to get a very specific sponsor for this video, the brand that I've been using for years in my personal and commercial work, Artlist. While editing this video, I made a collection of every single sound effect I used, plus tons of extras that didn't even make the cut. I need right. important elements for me. If you use my link to sign up, thank you to Artlist for being my first ever channel sponsor, and I hope you guys check it out. Hey, that's pretty sick. Congrats, man, if you're watching this. It's time to discuss the elephant in the room. Now, in the list of steps, I mentioned turning the piece into a painting as the last stage, and it is. Again, you know, the music is a little bit different here, uh, but it's the same genre of classical strings, that type of deal. I mentioned turning the piece into a painting as the last stage, and it is. But before getting into compositing, knowing what I'm headed towards allows me to think ahead as I make decisions. So how am I turning myself into a painting? With an app called Actvis Oil Paint. I've actually used it before. One of my personal favorite sequences I've ever made is for the trailer from the editing and animation course I launched last year with my brother. And there's an announcement at the end of the video if you're interested in taking that course, but I'll save that for later. Anyway, here's a side by side for the before and after. Hmm. Interesting. I might look at that. 
We're learning stuff together. The piece was first animated in After Effects, and then the frames were ran through Actvis to change the style. Is it the same as painting every frame by hand? Of course not. And my goal isn't to say, look how easy it is to be an oil painter with this digital trick. Honestly, this feels kind of closely related to the debate around AI art. Personally, I'm not a fan of stripping the human element out and just having AI create the whole thing. To me, that isn't really art, but since it's subjective to each their own. Where I think there's a difference is when AI or programs like Actvis are used as an assisting tool to explore one's creativity further. A good I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. Using AI as an assistant, as a tool to help you with whatever you're doing instead of it just completely replacing the creativity behind your actual art, like you just said. A good example of this is like generative fill from Photoshop. But that's just my take. Let me know what you think in the comments. With everything recorded, it was just a matter of working some magic. So let's go through each shot, shall we? Starting with the establishing shot, I first color graded it in Resolve and then brought it into After Effects. Extending out the background was simple, and I used a 3D camera to push into the darkness. For okay, so I just wanted to see what else he was doing here before I paused it, but it looks like he placed down a painting uh, canvas, and with the overlay here, he just blended it in a way, whether that's overlay or setting it to screen or darken, uh, the shot that he used so you can see the little, you know, lines and stuff on the actual canvas. And so that's how I would assume he did that. Let's continue. Fake dolly movement. Running a single frame to test Actvis ended up with some pretty promising results. The overhead light shot was next. Okay. After picking a section that I thought would work, I spent a ridiculously long time cutting myself out. In retrospect, I probably should have done a sloppy version first because what ended up happening is I didn't like that take. After building up the scene with the overhead lights and shapes underneath, I messed around with glow settings and then made the decision to- That's actually a very creative way to, I didn't even, I didn't even just think about this, but showing how he created it in post-production with this method is very creative. And he's gonna move this canvas somewhere else as the other element that he took to create different, a different part of it. And yeah, there's a little bit of tracking there wherever he's doing the movement, but yeah, this is very creative. He's a very creative guy. To redo the cutout all over again. It was worth it though, especially when we look at the paint test for this scene. All right. Out all over again. So he's got this. He's got this wide shot. He, you know, he could have easily just cropped this in and and just showed him talking about you know what he's doing, but he decided to have it show the the canvas here, and he took the time to go into detail and add, change the orientation and position it in a way that that it's also in the canvas in this shot as well. It's impressive. Very impressive to the amount of detail that he's doing in this video and the overall graphics as well, which I've made that pretty clear. Though, especially when we look at the paint test for this scene. Next was the close-up yeah. card shot. The main trick here was to un- So for those, I mean, I'm trying not to pause like a bunch, but for this, for this he's not taking up too much of the canvas as far as like his hands covering it. You'll notice his fingers are covering a little bit of the edges, but he's got white gloves on, which makes it a little bit easier to rotoscope out. And then all you have to worry about is tracking the, the graphic that's over it on that. So. Next was the close-up card shot. The main trick here was to unstretch the suits on the card in order to match with the next scene. Speaking of which, this scene was split into two sections, animating the background texture, which I did as sort of a shifting puzzle loop, and then the main suits in the center, which I spent a bit of time giving some depth with gradients. Matching the pacing of the cards on stretching with this four suits scene here made for a pretty nice match cut. I was just about to say that. As storyboarded, I wanted the heart to act as a window to transition to the next shot. So I cleaned up the silhouette and extended out the edges with a white shape, as well as added a little bit of glow to tie it all together. Then using the heart as a mat for the shot, I was able to flow right through the four suit scene into this shot. And with that, there was only one piece left. The eye. This is, this one I, what in the world was that? To this shot. And with it's that, little... there was only one piece left. <laughs> okay, well, anyway, yeah, this is pretty sick. He's showing him build out all of the sections and then he's gonna show us the whole thing at the end, which I'm actually excited to see because already this looks sick just with the graphics and his 
his editing and animation style, I am a big fan of so far from what I've seen. And so, I mean, honestly, on YouTube, this is some of the most impressive editing just in general when it comes to the attention to detail, sound design, you know, the animation, just post-production that I've seen, you know, on YouTube so far. Leave a suggestion in the comments if there's people that you also want me to check out that's really uh, talented like this guy right here. The eye. This one I definitely underestimated. First, I spent some time manually stabilizing my eye on the pupil. This way I could composite in elements a bit easier, especially since I plan to replace the pupil. I took a frame into Photoshop and started painting the pupil out so I could have a clean plate. A little disclaimer, it's a little unsettling to see, but I promise the final result is worth it. Just Bringing it, it back yeah. into After Effects, oh, I remade the reflections to place back on top. I then cut out my eye, which sounds a lot worse than it actually is, so I could place the clean plate inside. Finally, I brought in the suits and messed around with blending modes, distorting them to fit, and extra little details like shading underneath the eyelid to really sell the effect. It's funny because once I ran it through Actifist, most of that detail kind of just disappeared, but I do think it actually made a difference for the final painting result to look as good as possible. Yeah. And that was really it. Except for one major problem. I didn't like the intro anymore. It just didn't fit the playing card theme. So just like everything else in this video, it was- Mmm. Dramatic. No, I'm just kidding. Well, I mean, it was dramatic, but uh, he went to a black screen and he just dropped everything. Music, uh, you know, the pacing, whatever, and said that he doesn't like the intro, I guess. And so that gives it for a dramatic feel. A black screen, there's multiple, you know, people have their opinions, but when making content, and again, this is his channel, he can do whatever, you do whatever you want on YouTube when it comes to creative freedom, right? But a lot of times people like to put captions of what they say, uh, just so there's still something to read and look at, you know, when you're saying what you're saying, right? In this case, he decided to keep it black and that's his own personal decision, but I've seen it done both styles. And that was really it. Except for one major problem. I didn't like the intro anymore. It just didn't fit the playing card theme. So just like everything else in this video, it was time to adapt. I reset and gave it another go, this time incorporating the playing cards. I don't know any card tricks, so I settled on learning to card spring the deck, practicing just enough to make it work for this reshoot. In hindsight, I probably should have caught this in the storyboarding phase, but it's akin to looking too close at a painting to notice its flaws. Sometimes it's not until after you step back to admire the whole thing that you realize what needs adjustment. Being finished doesn't always mean that the work is complete. And Exactly. Exactly. I'm talking about like the text on screen. Yeah, so he's got a type typing typewriter sound effect for each time the words are are being popped up. And I see he added, you know, like the word finished and complete are a different font than everything else, which is again, you know, a small detail that that really highlights those words. And the music is a lot more it's it's very slow and he's doing the same thing with the cuts and just the pacing of it because he's really trying to you know explain what, what what's going on here Bleep. and this is why i stress the importance of learning to adapt just like how this whole project started with not being able to paint there's always a solution to be found resigning to defeat is not how you progress the bottom line is if you can and you know it'll make your project even just a little bit better then you should and you know what i think it was worth it as you're about to see right now The finished piece is up on my Instagram right now if you want to go watch it loop a few times. And if this video inspired you and you'd like to start your own. Man, yeah, that was sick. That definitely uh, met the expectations that he was building up throughout the whole video because sometimes you can build 
an expectation from your audience throughout the video. And then once you finally show it, you're kind of just like, like, are you serious? And throughout this video, I mean, he made a lot of good points that I clearly said I agreed with. And that definitely um, met the expectation that he built out throughout the whole video, just showing the different graphics and stuff. If anything, that was more than what you'd be expecting just because that was very well put together and that was pretty sick. Once again, it's probably gonna be the last time I say this in this video, but the attention to detail when it comes to sound design and just everything in general. I mean, this is like, that clip is one of those things that you wanna watch multiple times to kind of examine everything that's going on. Yeah, well done. Let's see if there's anything else. On Creative Journey, I suggest checking out the course I co-created with my brother, Frame by Frame. Inside, I share my complete perspective on animation, as well as many lessons breaking down specific animations, my personal favorite techniques, and so much more. You can get the animation part of the course by itself, plus get 10% off when you use this code. Or if you'd like to make videos like this, you can get an even better deal by getting the full Frame by Frame course, which includes a deep dive into cameras, shooting, script writing, post-production, and of course, animation, basically making it a full filmmaking masterclass. The link to all of that is below if you want to learn more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. He's got his own logo thing at the end as well. I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty sick. I mean, I really enjoyed watching that, just in general. You know, there's some things that he said in there that I completely agree with. Some things that I uh, learned when it comes to what he used to create that type of style. And just the overall video was something, it was an enjoyable watch, I'll say that much when it comes to the creativity and everything that he did inside of it. And now, even though he's not necessarily one of the biggest YouTubers that I've reacted to before, I mean, he's only got 19 videos on his channel. This one has is the first sponsor he has, but he's killing it. Like, if you're seeing this, man, you are killing it. That was pretty sick. The amount of time you put into these projects just to share with your audience is uh, pretty sweet. Talent like this definitely deserves to be witnessed on YouTube, especially when it comes to people in the production world. And the other person that this kind of reminded me of that I said earlier in the video was Gox, which is a reaction that I made a little bit ago. And if you want to see that, you can click right here, check that out, and I'll see you at the next edit.